of mine. And uh, last, uh, this is not part of uh, uh, you know my presentation, but I think the cases which are pending in the courts of uh, different companies in the high courts or other. Uh, I think it is about time that we put up a proposal to the legislature to set up special courts, hydrocarbon courts. To settle the issues of hydrocarbon, where judges are being trained in the subject so that they can decide in a period of 90 days to you know, 180 days, max they can decide the cases. Instead, you know, a case which is going on for years and years and somebody take, someone take a stay, that is stay stays there forever and uh, thank you very much uh, you know I, want, I, I, I wanted to you know, I always uh, end my presentation on uh, poetry and today I chose a verse from great Ahmed Fraz and he said that Shikwaye zulmate shab se to kahi behtar tha Shikwaye zulmate shab se to kahi behtar tha apna hisse ki koi shamma jalate jate to ये एक अफर्ड है वाईसीसीआई की शेल की जो पार्टनर हैं हमारे हम सब की एक अफर्ड है कि जो अंधेरा है उसको कम करने के लिए हम रोशनी जलाएं आप जेनरेशन ऑफ टैरिफ एक्चुअली द जेनरेशन कॉस्ट इस लेस देन टेन रुपीस इट इस नाइन पॉइंट्स इफ यू हैव दैट रॉबी देर इस देर इस सम सिल्वर लाइनिंग दैट व Bring new generation to reduce the energy mix. Yes, we have to fix the circuit that we have to fix uh, the capacity. Internal capacity, Pakistan is just above African countries in terms of per capita power consumption in the next three to four years by 2026-27. And obviously, if that happens, it is going to be replicated in Pakistan, which is going to create some demand. But at the end of the day, the industri industrial demand has to pick up and I'm sure that the government is uh, negotiating with IMF in terms of how they can price industry at a level where their demand can grow and obviously there are many factors. If that happens, then the energy cost of 16 rupees, it can go down, I can tell you in our case, in KLFX case, the capacity cost is not more than two and a half rupees per kilowatt hour if you operate the plant, you know, on an optimum level, which if we are able to in Pakistan, uh, we are hitting the camp for a very long time. Uh, the entire power sector is being run in a very good but I would still say that, you know, uh, we have been in SIFC offices, can they are actually not keen there and it was rested to do it ESAP. So if that happens again, you know, there will be a lot of opportunities for you know, investors to take control of these distribution units. And uh, you know, with some utilities having daily losses of as high as 40%, again, there will be huge opportunity to improve, make money, and also invest. Uh, you know, when you talk about opportunities, obviously, every opportunity should require some return. So it's something which, again, has to be understood by uh, uh, international investors for building the transmission lines. Uh, yes, for sure, uh, there is a need to bridge the gap between North and the South because we have seen that the cheaper generation was curtailed because the transmission line was not there or the power cannot be evacuated from South to North. So, uh, with another share, Dr. Saab used one, मैं करूँगा कि व्यवस्था रहे शजर से उम्मीदें बाहर रख। थैंक यू। दिल्ली की शादी इट रिक्वायर्स वन शॉर्टर टाइम में। इन इन टर्म्स ऑफ़ द सोलर एंड द नेट मीटिंग गवर्नमेंट हैज अनाउंस्ड दैट दे आर नॉट डिसकंटिन्यूइंग नेट मीटिंग। बट सॉरी एंड आई विल नीड टू स्केप फ्रॉम हियर आफ्टर to something close to maybe 9 rupees. I can tell you in many countries, please search and we, or if you are from research institutes, in many countries, net metering has finished. The governments are saying, you can come up with your solar system, but do it for yourself. No, the grid 
is, is, not, uh, is not asking you to provide power to itself. You want to reduce your cost, you put up solar, but grid is not going to buy. In UV it has happened. In certain countries in Europe, you, if you have a net meter, you have to provide that power for free. They will not pay you for that. So in Pakistan, we are still paying, and the payback in certain cases is less than two years. So, uh, and, and the people who have to pay for that payback is the people who... <laughs> So thank you to Mona Sarvi. He had a very packed schedule, but he took our time to attend uh, the symposium. And with that, ladies. So it was not easy to do business. The contracts actually were not being maintained, and last but not the least, your payments were delayed. This situation got further aggravated over time and we talked about the circular debt. So when you put all of this together, why would a foreign company want to work? Uh, because you, you are not finding the big reserves, you are, it's difficult to do business and you are not getting paid. So that is one of the key reasons for the exodus. However, I would like to mention a few things. So in the past, uh, so you know, you need to have exploration licenses granted, you have to provide the acreage. So a lot of the activity that is taking place, as Dr. Zeddy also mentioned, is in the, you know, the, the Indus uh, basins and some, some other parts, but most of the country is still very underexplored. The density rate of wells is very low. So we are not in a place where we can say that Pakistan does not have potential. Pakistan does have potential, hopefully, but we don't, we can't say whether it's there or not. Our, we can certainly say that tight gas, which was also mentioned, and perhaps I'll, I'll talk about that later. <laughs> certainly there is there is proven resource in tight gas, which is quite substantial. Shale gas is also there. Uh, so, and offshore is also an unknown, but it, it would be huge. As far as conventional uh, reserves are concerned, the easy access areas where the infrastructure is there, I think the low hanging fruit has gone, which is why the discoveries are quite small today. But again, there is a lot of area that's underexplored. So we are doing the right steps in terms of the licensing rounds. What we are not doing, which for example, Oman does, is when they share a block, they have already done seismic. So the prospectivity is known before somebody applies for a license. Here, as Dr. Pusadik also mentioned that you know, we want to get foreign companies to come to unrest this, unrest that. You know, this costs money and nobody wants to do something unless they see a benefit uh, for themselves. So, uh, so that is the right step. Tide gas policy has been announced, so that is a good step. In terms of ease of doing business, a number of measures have been taken uh, to, to simplify things and I think they are all uh, positive. So keeping it at a high level, I think this is good. The one key thing which is probably the most important as mentioned by I think when you have uh, the presentation, that we do a request for almost 20 million tons per annum in line with us. But actually we have waiting for around 50 to 60 percent of the capacity. There are times there is a lack of fertile soil because the past sector started uh, leaving behind fertile soil, so there would be a lack of fertile soil. So then we would have to go somewhere to start exporting for a lot. At times there is a lack of weather. These kind of problems we have been Generally speaking, the entire sector target farm has the capacity to produce almost 60% of our biggest diesel production and a little bit more than 30% of our own production. So, how to optimize production? So basically, naturally, we need to increase production of motor gasoline as well as diesel and reduce fertile soil to no more required. Then it's basically a prediction of the refining cycle. Because all the refiners are almost are receiving the same amount of refining. So for that purpose, we have been working and uh, working with the government very closely for loss almost now more than four years to come up with a refining policy 
where the current like policy was uh, announced or uh, I think it was back in 1997, almost 25 years back. And I have done some calculations, and all this delay in the rural fire policy has cost the country almost a billion dollar per annum. So we have already lost four billion dollars because of delay in implementation or approval of the fire policy. The policy which you have mentioned, initially the policy would cater for both green fuel refinery as well as rural fuel. But the remaining two, which is Parco Refinery and uh, Synergy Co, they were having some concerns. That's why this date of 22nd April lapsed and we were unable to sign all these agreements. But having said that, we are in dialogue uh, with the federal government and hopefully in the next couple of weeks this will be sorted. So I just thought I must clarify because uh, others have uh, mentioned this point. Now coming back to your questions, how can we curtail smuggling? Is it better fluctuating? Yes, I do agree that a couple of months back this number uh, of volume which was being reported was uh, very high. So I will only share what I am allowed to share because there are a lot of sensitivities around it. So OGRA along with the Ministry of Petroleum engaged all these stakeholders. I can only share that with uh, such a large audience. And then uh, we witnessed that there were significant action taken and the diesel sales, which basically went down to as low as 13,000 metric ton, uh, in the last uh, couple of weeks has now crossed 20,000. So yes, so the action has uh, definitely given results. Now the question is how to maintain the sustainability of uh, this action. So again, uh, this goes back to uh, my earlier comment that we are in dialogue uh, with all the relevant stakeholders and hopefully it will be good. Uh, I mean, uh, more options for the consumers. So those are positives about deregulation. And yes, we have been hearing uh, deregulation for a while, uh, over the last few years. But the one thing that it does, and I, I've, been, I've been hearing my fellow Panel members as well. There is the value it brings to the table is that it, it gives the potential investors clarity around the operating model in your, in your country. So it makes uh, the investment case clearer. Now, yes or no is a different discussion. At least uh, potential investors can understand what they're getting. Right? So that, that's one big upside of uh, of deregulation. Now, now, listening to the various presentations and the panel, panel discussion, the one thing that we really want right now to be able to do with is some investment in the, in the energy sector. So looking at, looking at it from that perspective, yes, it's, it's important that we head in that direction. So what are some of the um, measures that can be taken? I think first of all, the lubricant manufacturing companies need to continue to lobby with the government. They need to continue with the anti counterfeit measures. Uh, there needs to be solid policing in the market. The government needs to impose penalties and even imprisonment and confiscation of property in such cases. Um, the law enforcement agencies need to go out and police. They need to do tests in various markets to see what is happening. And last but not least, awareness amongst the consumers needs to be done. And a couple of us some time back tried to sort of uh, join hands together and work on this, but unfortunately uh, we were not very really successful. So we really need, uh, we're looking at the government for support and of course the, the marketing the manufacturing companies need to partner up and support the government in moving forward. So I hope that answers your question. Uh, I think contact uh, with Pogra, so there's uh, no much difference.
and the one entity is now planning to put up uh, a big plant. I will not go into the details because they are in the conceptual stage. So to answer your question, yes, Cobra is supporting.